My name is William Barton. I'm a descendant of the Kalkadunga tribe of far northwestern Queensland. This is a story about me and my instrument, the didgeridoo. I've always wanted to make a didgeridoo myself, using wood from my father's country. So that's what this journey is about, really. I'm 21 years old and I've been a professional didgeridoo artist since the age of 12. This country, the Mount Isa region, is where I call home. Well, the didgeridoo, it is a very deep and uh, spiritual instrument and it is used in a lot of tribal ceremonies. But in this modern day and age, I like to go out of that circle and bring the didgeridoo to a whole new audience. I've adapted my style of playing the instrument so I can play a symphony orchestras, classical musicians. Well, I was taught to play the didgeridoo traditionally by my uncle Arthur Peterson when I was about seven or so. And he was a great didge player of the one year Lytle tribes. I guess in Aboriginal law, the old fellas pick out the potential ditch players when they're just young boys. I was lucky to be that chosen one from the Kalkadunga mob. Yeah, look at this one, eh? The termites have done a pretty good job on this for us. It's a nice solid piece of wood. Certainly hollow all the way through. Judging by the diameter and the length, I'd say that this one would be in the key of maybe B or A to me. for another few days here on Carlton Hill Station then we'll um, work uh, the area between Mount Isa and Cloncurry. We'll just have to watch ourselves though because it's wet season right now and uh, there's a lot of rain around eh? I play guitar as a little bit of relaxation as well as self-discovery. I like the difference of working with a contemporary instrument and um, I just like to be always learning, whether it's learning more rhythms on the didge or finger picking techniques on the guitar. I just like to continue my musical journey and then share that with other people. I started working on a song four or five years ago when my dad was still alive and I'm working on finishing that right now. It's sort of like a tribute to him and uh, the Calcadoon people I, I guess. It's a fine summer's day with some winter rain but with old memories coming back once again So I turn my back around And I head for where the sun sets down Kalkadunga, Aguilar and Salmon Ranges 
I'm not quite sure how I'm going to finish it, but I hope this journey will help shape it. We used to travel through here with my mum and dad when I was much younger. And this place is just like it was then, quiet, peaceful and relaxing. This is also an area of great significance for the Kalkadunga people because in the 90s the whole of Carlton Hill Station was reacquired by the Kalkadunga people so that we could own and control this country forevermore. And it was actually my mum and dad who spent years in business and legal battles to get this land back. So now people like me could come back here and do what I am doing. Thanks especially to the efforts of my dad, a proud Kalkadunga man himself. Finding it pretty hard to leave this place, I'll gun about agree. It makes me think about my family a lot and how the old people used to live around here. away we had a bush funeral here on Carlton Hill Station like a good old bushy. There were two ringers on horses leading him down the aisle. It was just a great ceremony and we had it just down the road from here because he always said he wanted to be buried on the land he fought so hard to get back. I'll probably call by his sight and see him on the way out anyway. Mate, jeez, it bloody uh, sprinkled down a bit last night. Pushed the car out of the bog three times, crossed about five rivers. Lost half our dinner that night too, and half our sleep. That's the wet season for you, I guess. Lake Julius, where we are now, is uh, right in the heart of Kalkadunga country. It wasn't too far from here where they found my great-grandmother wandering around in the bush. Way back in the, I guess, mid-1800s, she was found out in the bush by a Scottish family, the Maclean's, after one of the massacres. They found this little Aboriginal girl just wandering around out in the bush. No parents, no family, no nothing. And the Maclean's, they took her in, looked after her and, um, basically reared her up. She became part of the family. Annie McLean they called her. When she grew up and the couple that found her got old, it was her daughter. They returned the favour and looked after them till they passed away. She was my grandmother, Daisy Barton.
this is the place we used to call Sun Rock, which is a pretty special place for the Kalkadoon people. We used to come here a lot, show the people the cultural sites around the Manai's area. In the wall there's the old Kalkadoon figures. They created the, the work by crushing red ochre, which is a rock in this area, and mixing it with human blood at times. Sometimes they'd get the, the sap from the bloodwood tree also. So it's hard to say how long it's been there. It hasn't faded much in my lifetime. And right down the middle you can see the shape of the snake is very significant because the snake is the totem spirit of the Kalkadunga people. The Kalkadoons were also known to be a fierce fighting tribe. They put up a really savage fight for this land and to this day there's even a jet plane named after the Kalkadunga people, the Kalkadunga warrior. Dad. He met one of the male Kalkadun warriors, Wild Harry. He was one of the last warriors from the big old fire day at Battle Mountain. And this old fella, he told my dad the story of how he escaped getting killed by diving under the water. He was breathing through one of them water reeds and crossed over to the other side of the river and escaped from the massacre site. This old fella would have been um, in his 80s or so. And my dad was about 12 or 14. And they called him Wild Harry. He was a real proper old Calcutin warrior from way back. Kakaranga Yuru Kakaranga Marabai Ganta Mother Bella Bella Mother Lady Wama Kakaranga Yuru Kakaranga Marabai Get the mouth and a billy billy, mouth and a little woman. Billy billy, woman, wilding the world young. Billy billy, woman, wilding the world young. Woman, billy billy, woman, wilding the world young. Billy Billa, Wama, Wadding of Wajan. Billy Billa, Inta, Billy Billa, Muthi, Billy Billa, Wama, Wajan, Wadding of Billy Billa, Inta, Billy Billa, Muthi, Billy Billa, Wama, Wajan, Wadding of Wama. Yeah, I played at my uncle's funeral, at the old fellow's funeral who taught me, Uncle Arthur Peterson. And I wasn't immediately asked to do that, but I wanted to do it as a thank you to him for teaching me the didgeridoo. I was given the special privilege by his family of holding on to his didgeridoo, which is quite a rare honour in Aboriginal culture, because when an old song man passes away, they usually break the didge and bury it 
or even throw it out into the fire just to silence the sound forever of that old song man. And what I remember so clearly from my uncle is him telling me that the Dishu is a language. It is a speaking language. And like any language, it's something that you've got to learn over many months and many years. It's got to be a part of you and what you do. When we used to go bush with my uncles and that, eh? They would teach me about making digits and boomerangs or whatever. But it wasn't like, you know, teaching like in the, the school sense, where you go to a normal school. You just got to watch. You, you, you don't say anything. You just learn. You be silent. And when the time comes, you did it. In fact, there, there is no word for teaching the Kalkadunga language. I use the word Gantha, which is our word for inner spirit. Spinifex wax is created when the little black ants strip the, the spinifex for its wax. They build up their nests just beneath the, the ground um, or, or sometimes above it. I suppose they just live in the wax and make a good sort of nest out of it. The wax is, you know, perfect to fill cracks that form in the wood. Once you've heated it and it softens, it dries holes nicely. Spinifex wax is also good for clogging up a petrol tank on a car if you you know got a crack in your petrol tank. Well, it seems like a long time ago since I cut that uh, old Gigi tree down at Carlton Hill Station. And as the sun sets on day 10 of this journey, I'm going to finish by performing my first piece on this instrument. It'll be a composition about the journey we've been on to create this didgeridoo. Thank you. 
Dad told me when he was a kid, he used to wag school and that, and go down to the riverbed in Mount Isa, which is where the old people were. And he'd sit down there by the fire while they told their old stories and that sort of thing. I know those times he spent with them old people, listening to those stories really meant a lot to Dad. Yes, what was you awake, or was you sleeping? No, it just must have been my spirit speaking to me. Saying I'll be home one day. Yet I see the changes, the changes that you make. Over time to wear people in traditional ways and to see if the land I guess what I'm doing is just giving back giving back to my culture and my people because I was given something when I was very young and like the old fellows who taught me years ago I'm just passing it on <laughs> 